The reality is it doesn't matter what level of gardener that you are, it doesn't matter how much experience you have, you're always, because you're dealing with nature, you're always dealing with problems. So the difference between a good and a better gardener is their ability to recognise what is going on in the garden and being able to then correct it. That's one of the reasons why I actually believe that about 50% of gardening is just spending time in it. You might go grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, and spend some time in the garden, have a look at what's going on. And it's at that point that you can actually make um, decisions about what you can do to alter the garden and the conditions of the garden. In order to practice really good at garden hygiene, you want to make sure that any of the plant material that you bring in from, say, a nursery is not infected with either pests or diseases. So that's a great place to start. The other thing is to constantly disinfect your tools, stakes, etc., that might have been in contact with any diseased material. It pays to regularly clean your tools. Pick up any um, fruit that might have fallen off any of the fruit trees. By leaving it on the ground, it will only rot and encourage uh, more pests to actually enter the garden. I like to mulch underneath the fruit trees and make sure that they're kept pruned and increase the air circulation throughout because um, that will help with any diseases. Do things like wash your pots before you propagate again. Just use some soapy water. Cleanliness will also have an impact on the level of pests and diseases that you have in the garden. Overall, the best tip that I can give you is to create a garden that has plenty of biodiversity. And what I mean that by that is just, you want plenty of different types of plants in your garden. By having lots of different types means that you're not creating a monoculture. You're less likely to have issues with pests and diseases and nature will be able to actually correct itself. Ideally, I don't like to spray wherever possible. I wanna create an, an organic garden so I want to let nature do its work for me wherever possible and sometimes that, that means that you've just got to sit back a little bit and let it happen. And quite often if you've got an outbreak of aphids for example, before you know it you've got lady beetles in eating them. So I always tend to side on caution and let things uh, eventuate at its own pace. However, every now and again nature needs a little bit of a helping hand. So I've listed in the show notes some home remedies that you can make. You can go to the local nursery and purchase products as well. Just make sure you look out for low toxic options or organic options wherever possible. Now I'm going to highlight some of the most common issues that I get asked about in the garden. Firstly, caterpillars. Okay, Caterpillars on your brassicas. Their brassicas I refer to are the cabbage family of plants. Cabbage moth or cabbage butterfly. And you'll see them flying around in your garden. Um, they're a little white moth and they lay eggs on the underside of the leaves. They then hatch and from there those little caterpillars become very hungry caterpillars and they can devour your plants very quickly. So very common and one of the ways that I find to control them is to firstly to make decoy butterflies. It can easily be done with some old white plastic and some wire or I also plant lots of white flowers. That's because supposedly uh, the white butterfly, the white moth, cabbage moth, is actually territorial and they won't lay eggs where there's been other butterflies. Another way to control it that I find really effective is to actually uh, net it. And you can sort of see over in the background here, I've got some brassicas actually in that bed there. I've put a really fine net over the top of them. I don't have to worry about pollination in that case because I'm not actually eating any fruit from the brassicas, it's just the foliage. So uh, it's a great way of stopping them from laying their eggs on the back. The other thing, you can actually go around and manually remove the eggs. I just grab my finger and my thumb and I rub them off. I will use an, an organic product called BT or Dipel. It's um, BT shortened for a Latin botanical name of some sort of bacteria. I can't pronounce it, so I won't but um, you can purchase the product from your local nursery and it works really well. Basically what happens is they eat the foliage that has been sprayed and they'll die overnight. The next common issue I wanna address are aphids. Now they're many different types. However, essentially they're the same. They just come in different, different weather colors or shapes. 
but predominantly what they do is they suck the sap out of a plant. They typically love to munch on fresh young foliage. Ants also love to farm these guys. So if you see ants, it potentially means that you've also got aphids because they feed on the honeydew that is actually produced by, by the aphids themselves. The easiest homemade remedy is to use some soapy water. It's easy to do, just grab a spray bottle and you grab a small amount of dishwashing detergent, about the size of a five centimeter piece. Put that into your spray bottle and fill the rest with some, some water and then apply that and spray the aphids themselves. What essentially that soapy water is doing is it's putting a, a, a a coat, a really fine film over the top of their their bodies and essentially aphids breathe through their their shell so you're in turn suffocating them. Also look out for black soot on your trees so they in turn suck the sap which produces the honeydew which then becomes mouldy so it's another indication that you may have aphids. The other common issue that I get asked about is citrus gall wasps. These are tiny little wasps that lay eggs on the citrus and they bury into the stem of the tree and that causes it to go lumpy. It's very common in most of the southeastern states of Australia it's that they actually burrow in, they grow, and it takes about nine or 12 months and then they'll hatch. So what you want to do is to actually remove that but there's no organic spray so the only way to control it is to remove the foliage and typically you'll do that before spring before they hatch remove that put that in the bin don't put it in your compost because it's likely that they'll hatch and then and they they'll find their way back into your tree you can also put hello sticky traps up to try and catch some of them the best control is to remove that foliage. Powdery mildew is a common fungal disease that you'll often find on plants such as zucchinis late in the season. It appears as a powdery white spot on the leaves and it can cause the leaves to turn yellow and to die off. So you wanna encourage really good airflow around the plants. Don't overcrowd planting and also don't water overhead as this tends to cause the spores to spread. Water the base of the roots wherever possible. So I encourage good airflow and to water in the morning rather than the evening. You may also notice some black and yellow ladybirds feasting on the fungus and they should be encouraged. So not to be concerned about seeing them there. To also control it, uh, you can spray with a homemade fungicide of just milk spray which is based on a 10 to one ratio. And I've got that listed in the show notes on how to make that. You can also purchase a low environmental impact fungicide from your local nursery. One of the ones that I recommend is called Eco Fungicide. And to round out the top five, we have snails and slugs. These are also good in the garden as they tend to eat all the decomposing material. However, every now and again, they'll wanna eat your fresh young seedlings, which is no good. They are easy to see. They tend to leave a trail of slime behind. And they're also most active at night. They can be controlled organically by using copper tape. Snails don't like to pass over the copper. So you can purchase some copper tape from your local nursery. Ideally, what I like to do is grab a, a plastic container or an old pot and I just wrap the copper tape. I stick it around the edge of that pot and make that pot bottomless. By bottomless, I mean I remove the base of that pot so I can place it straight over the young seedling and I can remove it as it starts to grow. I don't like to use snail bait as it's not great for pets and wildlife. If you're experiencing any issues at home, please post in the comments below. The best cure is prevention. And one of the ways you do that is by spending time in the garden. I always recommend you do things like hand water your vegetable garden for the reason that you're spending time in it because that's when you'll pick up and notice if there's any issues before they become a problem. So on that note, Go out, get in the garden, go and have fun, stay hungry.